we are starting our course on management science and in today's first lecture I will be discussing with you what, why and how of management science. So, that will be part of the introduction that we are going to have today. We have seen so many excellent managers and perhaps successful persons and we find that there is something very special about their managerial skill. So, in this today's introduction to management we are starting with some of those. What do managers like Ratan Tata, Deveshwar, Mr. Banga, Lakshmi Mittal, Aris Pawar, Dr. Reddy, just to name a few they have in common. In fact, there are many other managers those who are equally successful. I have just you know, listed a few. What, what is common in them? Is that their managerial skill, managerial knowledge, the practice that they have? They get the things done by optimizing resources and making strategic decision and that is what is management is all about today. So, management has often been described as the art of getting things done through people. There are of course, many definitions. So, I am just uh, discussing one or two with you. Manage, managers give directions to their organizations, provide leadership and decide to have their organ, uh, to have their organizational resources accomplish the goal whatever they want and this is what Peter Drucker has tried to explain management as. The authority, Peter Drucker, the authority in management. Management is the attainment of organizational goals in an effective and efficient manner through a number of things and these are planning, organizing, leading, controlling and optimizing the other organizational resources. And management studies thus consists of the technical aspect of management, the human resources aspect of management, financial aspect of management, just the, the broadly the three, but then as we go on to discuss we will find there are many more disciplines uh, like technology management, marketing management, uh, information systems, there are a number of disciplines you know of management. Now, besides these other factors which affect management are the social level or socio-economic level we can say or the economic status, socio-economic level, educational level in a society. So, there are management principles which we are using all over the world, but also some specific uh, uh, designs are there for different uh, we can say uh, uh, different countries or uh, the different uh, organizations. There may be a little bit difference. We are broadly discussing what happens as the management science all over the world and also the examples you may find that I uh, will be giving you know few examples from India, some researches and some, uh, some examples to practices in India too. When we think about management science and managerial thinking, the, uh, the input came from many sources 
from many countries and many, uh, many organizations and also during different times. If we begin with Gilbert, Gilbert couple, they worked on time and motion studies, the beginning of, uh, of uh, 20th century and they wanted to optimize resources to get better profit, which even today managers, you know, believe that, okay, the best uh, organization is the one that um, can make the best profit. So, they started with that idea and at that time, the, and even today perhaps, you know, for in many uh, managers, you know, the managers thinking is that money is the only motivator. But as we move on, we find that management science today has, you know, lot many inputs from various, uh, uh, various, uh, uh, we can say, uh, directions. And uh, when we go on to discuss further, then we find that Fayol, he gave his uh, principles of management, Taylor gave Taylorism and then we moved on to the, uh, uh, the management like scientific management and the other management uh, systems. So, in uh, scientific management uh, and, and uh, perhaps you know the examples which Gilbert couple they gave, there the payment was contingent upon the number of pieces that people perhaps make and that is why we are talking about money as a motivator. I hope you understand the piece rate and time rate system of payment. So, so it began with piece rate system and this was the uh, with reference to the participation uh, of uh, people okay, in the organization in terms of that piece rate system. And then came the scientific management movement where the man uh, was treated as a part of machine or part of the whole system. Okay. As, as a machine as part of the whole system, we, uh, we can put it like that way. In other words, man was not considered as a performer, as a human being, but only as part of the system that the system will be effective if all these, these parts are effective. But then as we move on to the development uh, in the field of management, we find that the human relations uh, ideas came and the Hawthorne studies were conducted uh, say for uh, about 10 years 1922 uh, to 1932. Yes, and uh, from time and motion studies perhaps in Hawthorne studies the experiments they were trying to look at the working conditions. So, the set of experiments uh, by engineers to study the effect of physical working conditions on performance was actually designed. And uh, so, so, it was beyond the time and motion studies and the scientific management. The other factors which did not affect were, were uh, actually found in this particular study, because this study as you can see, they are trying to look at the physical working conditions in addition to the other time and motion study and other engineering input, but they found that an, a new area of management came uh, in, in, the, in the limelight and which referred to the issues of time, the type of uh, supervision, leadership style, communications, group behavior, concept of participation and so on. Houghton studies uh, as uh, perhaps uh, maybe, maybe you have heard about it uh, in some other context, these were the experiments which were designed in, a, in the Houghton plant of, uh, of Chicago and uh, of the Western Electric Company in Chicago. And uh, 
the idea we have already given you that we were trying to, they were trying to look at you know the physical working conditions in addition to other technical conditions. And the outcomes were that the sum of these factors which I am just showing the type of supervision, leadership style, communication, group behavior, participation, they found that these had motivating potential. And so, if an organization looks at the working conditions and some of these factors, making it more effective is perhaps possible. And so, Hawthorne studies made an excellent contribution to the understanding of overall management system. Now, I will draw your attention to some of the eastern perspective or Indian perspective I can say on management that the opinion, the Parashar's uh, observation that the opinion should be taken from participants in decision making. However, only those who are believed to be capable of making decisions or giving opinions should be involved in this process. This is Parashar said. Kautilya also contributed to management. In fact, you know uh, in his Arthashastra, the, uh, that that is a document basically also on, on ideas on management. He talked about that the consultation with single minister may not lead to any conclusions. Two ministers might overpower the king by their combined actions, but consultations with more than more than that that means more than three or four perhaps will certainly give satisfactory results in the decision making process. So, we can see that in India we had the management input from various sources at different times. When we are looking at management, there are strategic decisions we have to take and we find that we are talking about various approaches to management in which we have fusion with developmental issues the and the other uh, perspectives. There is a restatement of certain personal management issues from the starting and there are strategic management issues. So, number of issues we have in the management science today. When we look at uh, the factors which affect the uh, managerial thinking and the strategies that managers make, we find that number of factors are there. For example, environmental factor and technology that we have to manage, one group of factors. We have participants as another group of factors. Then we have participants and how cohesive they are and how team is working that is important in today's time. And so, from here we move on to the functions of management and we can see that functions of management we have discussed that you know just, just short while ago that we have planning, controlling, organizing, leading. Some of the major uh, factors you can see here. So, when we look at managerial performance, manager has to actually perform on all these, all these uh, uh, areas. When we are talking about managerial functions, we also understand that manager has to optimize resources. So, for the best results, we have to optimize the technical, human, financial resources and so, we can also say that achievement of goals, profits, 
satisfaction of employees, effectiveness of the organization, its survival and its growth are important as the goals for a manager for an organization who is running an organization. Now, there are number of branches of management science. I am listing here a few financial management, marketing management. In financial management, we are trying to optimize resources, whatever is the uh, contribution, financial contribution and how do we make the best use of that. In marketing, of course, the product we have made, but unless you know we market our product in an I am talking about the, the uh, work organizations, you know, where we are uh, producing something, the production organizations. Yes, organizations may be of different types, which we will discuss later, but I am talking about production organizations where management is has the, the maximum perhaps concern. So, marketing unless you know my product is sold, uh, perhaps how will I get the return on my investment. So, marketing becomes very important. Then uh, the technology management, again you know in the production system, we have technology, different types of technologies. They started with uh, say uh, uh, the manufacture where they were perhaps you know the technology was only the manual uh, work and manual uh, labor and the handicraft. Then we moved on to the, uh, the types of uh, mechanical uh, processes and then uh, the automated systems and now the of course, the robotics and so on. Nevertheless, we have to understand that human being is an important component of this management system, because all organizations are not automated and they are not computerized and even if they are you still need you know some uh, brilliant uh, minds to actually manage those. So, we have to see that technology management is extremely important, but that has to be also looked into as a system of performance. Then uh, the recent addition to management system has been the, uh, the introduction of information technology and we have management information systems and that helps us in really designing our strategies and keeping keeping you know the uh, result oriented uh, system for us another uh, new aspect of management has been the international management this refers to the uh, globalization process that we have today Today, the world, the whole world, you know, the business is going in such a way that uh, it's just, you know, in one country it's manufactured, it's sold in some other country, and and uh, the technology comes from somewhere. Manufacturing is done elsewhere, and and, and uh, you can see the globalization. I'm sure every day you uh, you read that in the newspapers these days. So when we are talking about international management that uh, has become very important and here uh, the, the aspect that becomes an extremely important is the culture. When we borrow technology from somewhere and the system from somewhere and, and want to do something say out here in, in India, then the, uh, the culture also becomes an important factor in managing the international uh, organizations. So, international management has also become an expertise and uh, there are international business organizations and the industries and so on. And uh, of course, the human resource management which I have been uh, saying that uh, this is important in uh, many other areas too. And in fact, one of the most important input and uh, in India we have uh, good population, good human resources, but if we still need uh, skill development and the HRD for uh, making an impact. But the world is looking at India because we have trained manpower here and 
they have the capacity to get trained also. So, so this becomes an important aspect for management today. Then uh, at, uh, at this point, let me also uh, give you some idea about uh, the, the human resource management. The human resource management is the process of developing, employing and evaluating policies, procedures, methods and programs related to individuals in the organizations. So, it is an area of practice within an organization and a body of knowledge that may be developed and taught. So, short while ago I was uh, discussing with you that uh, human resource management is becoming very important and we really need to train people in various skills and we have to do uh, lot of effort in managing human resources for getting the optimum results. Now, human resource management as a field has developed its knowledge base in uh, uh, partly internally and partly through contributions from other disciplines. So, there are many disciplines which are important in the management science. In other words, we can say that management science is a multidisciplinary concept or subject. So, the subjects uh, which contribute to management science, uh, again you know the list is not exhaustive, but a few subjects I am just trying to give you that uh, many disciplines like so, uh, sociology, economics, engineering, various aspects of engineering, law, even medicine and of course, education, psychology, journalism, all these contribute to our understanding of management science. So, management science is a multidisciplinary concept and, and this list is not exhaustive. There are many other uh, subjects which uh, contribute to management science, which uh, during the course of my discussion maybe this, this will appear again when we are talking about it. And so, when we look at you know the contributions coming from uh, these disciplines, we find that human resource management involves staffing, training and development compensation, employee relations as some, some of the issues. It also involves economic and technological changes, yes economic and technological changes might make some change in the human resource management strategies as well. And so, workforce availability and quality becomes extremely important in the whole subject of management. Now, we are also talking about growth in terms of the contingent workforce which is there and the demographics and the diversity at the place of work. We will be discussing some of these issues in our lectures. We have to also balance the work family, yes, work family uh, uh, matching. We have to do the balancing. Otherwise, if we expect that we hire an individual for 8 hours and that is it, but we forget that when we are hiring, we are hiring the whole man. And when we are hiring, that means, the work and family interface has to be taken into consideration and this is, this is uh, we can say uh, a new approach to managing today. Because if you believe that the person will come here and if he is having some problem uh, with his family, that might get reflected on uh, his uh, work performance. 
Therefore, management and when we say optimization of resources, we have to optimize the human resources also in terms of not only his skill and his performance, but also in terms of other issues like balancing work and family. So, this brings us to the managerial assumptions about human nature. Managers when they are managing the organization, they have certain assumptions about human nature and here the dimensions of philosophies of human nature given by Reitzman. I am trying to uh, discuss uh, his uh, explanations that he says that managers believe that the degree to which we believe people are trustworthy or untrustworthy. So, managers have their evaluation in terms of understanding human nature like the, is he trustworthy or untrustworthy, is he altruistic or selfish, is he independent or uh, self dependent, the dependent is he conformist to group norms? Yeah. So, managers think uh, this way. Then uh, strength of will and rationality versus control by irrationality and external forces. So, some of these aspects are important which managers think you know about human nature and based on which they uh, develop you know their manager um, their management managerial style. So, the organization management when we look at management is really discursive subject and much has been written about it. So, there are there are number of approaches and no single approach to management actually provides all answers. So, it is uh, it is uh, actually comparative study of different approaches which will yield benefits for the management and some of the approaches I am going to discuss in the next lecture and uh, we will see that how the comparative study of uh, management uh, gives us better uh, input for management science. So, uh, when we are looking at uh, some of these uh, uh, major trends, the work of leading uh, writers this provides a perspective on the management concepts and a central part of the study of organization and management thinking may be termed as the, the uh, managerial theory. So, in our introduction basically we are trying to understand different managerial theories and the central part of organization management perhaps will, uh, will be called as the managerial theory. And uh, here again you know once again we are looking at the uh, sort of comparison between the technical financial uh, aspects and we are saying that technical and financial aspects that they might get obsolete with time. However, here this slide uh, I, I just showed you to say that manage uh, that the technical and financial aspects say the rules might change, uh, the inputs uh, financial inputs might change and the financial strategies might change. And so, some what you are doing today may uh, need you know lot of change tomorrow. Similarly, when we are looking at the designs of manufacturing or we are looking at any other technical uh, aspect. Uh, in managing, very soon the technology might get obsolete, possibility is there and as we have seen in past 20 years that how fast we are changing our technologies and so the earlier one goes obsolete. 
but human resources do not get obsolete. They get more and more value as they, they get the experience. That is why today when we are looking at management science at every step we are talking about human resources as part of that, that managing you know any kind of a technical or any kind of a uh, resource, any kind of a organizational management. This brings us to one of the uh, we will say uh, newer approaches to management where we are looking at the strategic management issues. Even though I am going to discuss uh, about the strategic architecture um, in one of my lectures, but to give you an idea about the strategic management, what is strategy, let me just give you, uh, give you a few words here. Uh, strategy means that is the match of an organization that, uh, the, that he makes between the internal resources, skills and the opportunities and risks created by its external environment over long term and competitive advantage. So, Grant has given this definition and uh, I find this uh, is very good. In fact, uh, one of our books also we have used this definition given by Grant and uh, so why strategy? Because it regards people as the most important asset when we are to, uh, looking at the strategic management, it regards people as the most important asset. It involves all managerial personnel. It is proactive in relationship with people. It is proactive in relationship with people. It seeks to enhance organizational performance, employee needs and social well-being. So, from here we move to the new business paradigms. I gave you that, uh, that uh, definition of strategy uh, because in the new business paradigms we are talking about strategic management and the new business paradigm is changing very fast and under the changing business scenario, okay, just the business paradigm is changing and under this uh, we, are, uh, we have you know different uh, concepts. So, in just you know a few minutes I will I will acquaint you to some of those concepts and later on we are going to discuss that in great details. So, the basic underlying assumption of business are getting altered in these days, in the, these recent years and the strategy, the ways and the means, the technology and the organizations are taking new shades. <clears throat> and here some of the issues which uh, I am going to highlight which managers need to implement as part of uh, their uh, day to day working perhaps as part of the new management science uh, concepts we can say that there is strategic flexibility there is emerging strategic thinking. Remember strategic thinking and strategy is uh, not tactics. Yes, we will discuss that uh, sometimes later. So, here it is emerging strategic thinking, business strategy, overall business strategy and which relates to the e-business strategy today. And uh, as I said uh, in my earlier section 
that we have management information system now and we have developed you know some of these new paradigms. So, e-business strategy is something which is for today's managers. Then uh, the issue of global competitiveness. Since we have entered the uh, phenomenon of globalization, we have discussed just now and so the global competitiveness becomes important. So, how to really meet you know uh, with these challenges that is one of the important aspects of the new paradigm. Then uh, in this uh, we have strategic alliances, mergers and acquisitions for globalization. So, many, many companies are using that also in India now and this is one of the important aspects. Then comes the uh, issue of uh, innovation. So, management of innovation and development unless we have innovative, innovative minds, innovative uh, processes, innovative thinking and unless we have development of innovative uh, thinking for people, the new organizations may find it difficult to really achieve the uh, competition of today's time. So, we have to see that innovation becomes important and if someone you know comes with a new idea, we have to welcome that rather than saying that you have no business to give your views. So, innovation becomes extremely important factor. Then technology management and flexibility in that, we have already discussed technology management and flexibility related to that. Then uh, technology transfer is yet another uh, issue that is important. So, we have technology transfer uh, from, uh, from on uh, various uh, we can say um, areas from other countries to India and within India maybe to other uh, organizations and so on. Then uh, we have the information system flexibility and management which we have discussed in, in e-business we were discussing that. So, more or less you know this is also talking about the same thing. Okay, that is a repetition <laughs> here e-business models and their applications this, this is repetition and then we come to supply chain management uh, issues in organizations. We also have an important uh, aspect today that is the knowledge management. So, how much new knowledge we can really uh, develop for our organization and for which R and D perhaps you know becomes very important an issue for managing today's organization. We just cannot go on you know doing with whatever uh, technology we had earlier, we have to develop like uh, we have you know many examples of uh, new developments like we have the newer car projects so we hear you know the small car project is coming it is all innovative all Indian research is there and it is uh, um, for you know uh, people of India at, at uh, um, quite you know uh, low socioeconomic level also. This is what you know we hear as uh, one of the innovative strategies being done in India, but, but there are many, many examples like that. So, knowledge management becomes extremely important factor. Then also manufacturing flexibility is important and this takes us to the flexibility in quality management and quality we know that quality is an important aspect of overall performance which will lead to the uh, competitiveness and competitive advantage unless we can produce our products which are 
quality uh, which are quality based okay we cannot really uh, compete in today's uh, environment so quality and in this uh, production we need to put in flexibility at every level then uh, we have uh, also the issue of flexibility in the service sector then the business operations then the com the issue comes of organizational learning and flexibility and uh, every organization develops you know some knowledge for itself some research and development knowledge management what we were discussing so the there are learning organizations and there is organizational learning and we need to develop that with uh, with our flexible mindset then a uh, important factor here also is the organizational culture and effectiveness short while ago i was talking to you about international management and i said when we are uh, taking uh, uh, the uh, say technology from some other country uh, and the system overall system from the other country there is uh, sometimes difficulty in terms of the organizational culture because we have our own culture different country they have their own uh, different culture and based on this the uh, effectiveness of an organization might get affected so we have to look at that from here the issue of globalization once again i'm talking about that globalization actually is the process of uh, of creating waves of change leading to higher adaptiveness and responsiveness on the part of the industry so the the process you can see the global and globalization when we go to different uh, countries different environment and this is what you know we are trying to understand that how do we create the waves of change adaptiveness and responsiveness in this changing scenario so the flexibility at various levels of management has emerged as a key factor in the global competitiveness and in this issue of globalization again the the strategic issues in globalization once again i'll give you a few few ideas which uh, which are important in relation to globalization which are competitiveness technology uh, strategy and core competencies core competency that means which is the intrinsic competency of an organization because of which that organization can survive yes so the core competency one has to really look for what is the core competency of my organization only and then develop that then we can really compete then uh, technology alliances and the privatization issues are also important these days uh, we are finding that the private sector is coming up in a, in a big way or non government sector i can say in a in a big way and the technology alliances that we are finding that they are now into almost every field that we find in india whether you talk about power or you talk about the real estate or you talk about any other technology you know, in the electrical systems you are talking about um, airports or you are talking about roads you will find everywhere that there are alliances and the, there are privatization this is an important issue of management in today's context then the choice of technology of course depends on the resources 
the, uh, the opportunities that you have and we have to see that what type of technology do we need for, uh, for a particular uh, situation. Say, uh, I heard you know from uh, somewhere that there are brick making you know is manual brick making is a sort of a semi mechanized brick making, it is automated brick making and uh, there are many automated systems where one could perhaps you know make bricks uh, like in, in thousands you know in an hour. So, uh, when we are, so the choice of technology depends on the number of factors like the, you know, what, what do you really require and do you need to make the, those changes you know at this moment. The issue of management of change thus becomes an extremely important issue. So, we are changing from the time of uh, handloom time of industry and then the industrial revolution and we have moved on to the different sectors of technology and management. So, we have seen that the management system has changed from in fact, you know management is there ever since humanity is there, but, uh, but uh, the, the, as uh, the time changes, as the systems change also the management system also changes. So, management of change becomes an extremely important factor when we are look, looking at the issue of, of managing. So, from here we once again you know uh, look at the issue that we had the industrial revolution, different technologies came and then uh, the management thoughts from uh, different uh, corners that we, we have already discussed. In India also we have received you know many uh, managerial thinking and looking at the eastern management concepts in India there are uh, the concepts some of those I have talked to you about, but then you know in the Japanese system we have the different kind of uh, management uh, uh, concept. So, we have the quality circles, we have Kaizen, we have so many other concepts and this has given them real success in managing uh, their technology in a, in a uh, big way. So, when we are looking at the whole concept of management science, we are seeing that the inputs are coming every day and ever since humanity is there and ever since the industrial revolution came, we are not, uh, we are really going uh, uh, every day perhaps you know step by step and moving into the industrialization. Today India is uh, doing extremely well in terms of its uh, technology management and its uh, overall management strategies and that is why as a result of that we are finding that India is developing uh, in terms of uh, in terms of industrialization and also we find that the FIIs and uh, um, other you know people those who are FDIs those who are wanting to invest in India, they are finding it very comfortable. So, looking at this introduction to management that I was talking to you about, about we just had a, about a, a scenario of what happens in management and how managers have their strategies. In addition to this of course, we have number of issues in uh, management which we will be discussing in our uh, uh, lectures, the all, all the lectures in fact uh, are on different subjects, we will be discussing about how work motivation could be enhanced, how an organization can really uh, give better uh, opportunities by using the, be, uh, the best leadership styles, say for example, transformational and empowering leadership styles or how interpersonal behavior needs more attention than ever before, how ethics and the uh, corporate social responsibility become important factors for, for today. And we are finding with the change, the management of change, the, the world is changing and 
above all we find that there is need for development of human resources because if we really want to become competitive and we really want to make a place in the global scenario today, the HRD becomes an important aspect. In our next lecture, we are going to uh, discuss uh, about approaches to management in which we will find that there are number of approaches and number of schools of thought of management which we need to understand and as we were trying to look at today when I was trying to give you an idea about managing that no single approach of management can make us successful because management is many things at the same time and so how we can really understand the approaches and how do we use um, a contingency approach and the strategic management approach, how, what, what do we really mean. So, we will be taking up this in much greater details in our next few lectures. So, uh, another aspect that uh, I was trying to emphasize in this introduction is that diversity becomes an important factor today. And in this diversity, gender issue becomes yet another important factor. We find that one of the, one of the uh, surveys which appeared just a few days ago uh, is, uh, is suggesting that in those 500 fortune companies, there was a survey that where women directors were there even though their number is not very large perhaps something like uh, 14 percent or something of that type. But wherever women directors were there in these companies, those companies were doing much much better. So, one of the most important issues as I, as I can see is that we have to look at the issue of diversity and issue of gender in the organization. These are some of the new issue, uh, new aspects which we have to look at uh, uh, from uh, the management perspective today and from here. So, we are moving on to the next lecture on the approaches to management.